always love diagnosing and treating patients for hypothyroidism because when you do it right, the results can be so profound that people literally feel like they're getting their lives back. And that makes you feel really good. Hey, I'm Dr. Yates, and today we're going to talk about treating patients with natural desiccated thyroid. So natural desiccated thyroid, often called NDT for short, is made from thyroid from cows and pigs. And this is opposed to the synthetic thyroid of T4, which is typically called Synthroid or Ultroxin. So let's talk about treatment with desiccated thyroid and I'll go through all the pros and cons. I think the biggest pro for desiccated thyroid is that it contains T1, T2, T3, and T4. Uh, and then this is as opposed to just the plain T4 that you get with synthetic thyroid. So, and this is great because it's T3 is the active hormone and T1 and T2 also have some benefits. So for a lot of patients that are poor converters of T4 to the active T3, they still get all the benefits of T3 by using NDT. In addition, T2 has an effect on the liver. It has an effect on mitochondrial metabolism, lipid metabolism, which has an effect on your, on your fat mass. T2 is also necessary or involved for the conversion of T4 into T3. So someone who's a poor converter, that additional T2, even the T4 that's built into the desiccated thyroid, they're getting a better effect of it because of the T2s added into it, which makes it, makes it better. T1, which is almost never talked about, can play a role in brain function, and you'll often see it in client, lower in clients with mood disorders they found in studies, depression and fatigue. So all of this being said, it's pretty apparent as to why I often see such a benefit of prescribing NDT to patients over their synthetic T4 uh, prescriptions. So the cons. For people for health insurance, NDT isn't always covered, though it often is. Um, other cons are that it's, it's thyroid from cows or pigs thyroid. So with anyone with dietary restrictions, this can be definitely something that uh, re restricts them from using it. Um, products with T3 in it are typically not recommended for people with heart conditions. That being said, I've seen clients who have had heart conditions that did not do well in synthetic T4 that did better when using NDT. So I don't think that's just an across the board statement. Another con, and this is not a con directly for NDT, but just for thyroid hormone in general. Anytime you're using hormones, your body will become dependent on it. So it's not always the first line therapy. If someone is slightly suboptimal uh, for thyroid, it's always a good idea to start with the other basic treatments first. And I go over this in my previous video, the five steps to fix suboptimal hypothyroid. Okay, so let's talk about dosing NDT. And it, the dosing all depends on, on the case. So let's say you have a brand new patient, uh, some thyroid symptoms, you do their labs, they're in the normal range, but they're not optimal. That's not a desiccated thyroid case off the start. First, you wanna try, like I said in my previous video, all the vitamins, minerals, stress reduction, adrenal support first. Now, as opposed to a case where it's a new patient, they have thyroid symptoms, their labs aren't even close to being in the normal, and they would normally then be starting uh, from a medical doctor, typically the Synthroid or Altroxin. If you were to start on NDT first, usually the dose, it varies, the starting dose is usually 30 to 60 milligrams. And that varies on the severity of the symptoms, how far their labs are off, and the patient's size and weight. Finally, if there's a patient who's already on Altroxin or Synthroid, and they're not doing well on it, despite the fact that the TSH is showing that it's normalizing, they still have all the symptoms, they're still tired, gaining weight, feeling achy. If I'm gonna convert them from T4 to NDT, the conversion level that I typically start with, or the conversion ratio, is 100 micrograms <clears throat> of uh, L-troxin, or levothyroxine, to a 60 milligrams of NDT. So we're dealing with micrograms and milligrams. So 100 micrograms of levothyroxine to 60 milligrams of NDT. And you can do the math from that. Another dosing strategy that I typically use is that if the client's dose starts getting up to 90 milligrams or even higher, I've even seen clients up to 180 milligrams of NDT to get their, their levels normalized. At that point, I like to divide the dose. That would be my ideal. It doesn't always happen. But if, if they were doing 90, I'd have them take 60 in the morning, 
thirty in the afternoon, and ideally right after work, not before bed. Um, the difficulty with this is that all thyroid hormones, doesn't matter whether it's synthetic or natural, should be taken away from food. So sometimes patients that had difficulty getting that second dose in, in terms of timing, who knows, maybe they got to rush home and then take their kids to hockey or whatever mm -hmm. sports, if you're watching this in a different country, um, soccer, sorry, football, as you would call it. Um, so those things will play a role. And so sometimes people end up just taking the larger dose in the morning. But again, I find because T, because it has T3 in it, it has a, the T3 has a shorter life, um, but, it, but it gives more direct energy. So if, if you divide that dose up, you have better energy throughout the day and start with the bigger dose in the morning, the smaller dose later on. So if it was 120, you do 60, 60. If you go up 150, then it'll be 90, 60 and just going from there. Okay, and finally, I know I've talked about this already, but just because you're using thyroid hormone to address your thyroid levels, doesn't mean that that's the be all end all when it comes to thyroid health. You still need to do everything else we discussed in the previous videos because all of those things can play a role in your thyroid health. So it's making sure that the adrenals are taken care of, the mineral and vitamin status, hormone balance, all of these things are crucial. And you will find when those are taken care of, you don't need to take as much thyroid hormone. So people don't need as much desiccated. They don't need as much levothyroxine because you've addressed a lot of the underlying issues that increase your requirement for it. I hope this has been helpful. Doc Yates out. Mm -hmm.